I've been gone for a few months and I thought I would explain why. This is all positive, nothing to be afraid of here. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here. I've been missing for a while. I haven't painted for a few months. I got really sick and had to be hospitalized. But I always keep this channel positive, so we're not going to talk about what happened. Instead, I want to talk about some observations that I've made. Let's start first with the hospital. The first thing I noticed about the hospital is nobody sends flowers anymore. And I think that's because now there are cell phones. And with cell phones, you can let people know that you care and you're connected. So that was uh, kind of a surprise to me. The second thing that I noticed is um, the call button. Oh, the call button. Oh, to have a call button in life. I mean, you press this button on your bed and somebody comes. And they come and they don't say, what do you want? They say, how can I help you? Or is there something I can get for you? Oh my gosh, that call button. I've been in the hospital before, but I don't ever recall using the call button. This thing was fantastic. And I would imagine someone as rich as Oprah must use that call button all the time. The other thing that I noticed is a hospital roommate. Now there's a, a what do you call it, fabric that, that is between the two of you. But so, uh, you know, you have to see the person, for example, if you're going to use the bathroom or if you can use the bathroom, but there's a, there's a cloth separation. But the cloth separation does nothing in terms of your being able to hear what's going on. So within an hour of being in the room, and I was, I was in this room for five days, within an hour of being in the room, you know absolutely everything about this person, not just their medical condition, but about their children and, uh, you know, who they, who they, their marriage, where they live, what they value. It is amazing. And I thought, this is really interesting. This is like watching reality t TV with the sound off. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute. If that's happening for me, then it's happening for her too. And she's hearing all this stuff that's going on with you, which is awkward. I mean, obviously it's awkward, but it's also somewhat bonding. Luckily, my roommate, roommate, was um, absolutely lovely. At one point she asked if she was making too much noise because she was watching a small amount of television and I, and I told her no, I thought she was perfect. And as a matter of fact, I found uh, any noise that she made somewhat comforting. It made it feel less like, like a hospital setting. The other thing that I noticed is the staff. The staff was incredibly cheerful and respectful and kind. Now, I didn't expect that because we could just come through uh, two and a half years of COVID. So I expected people to be overburdened, maybe surly and maybe grumpy, to be quite frank, but they weren't. And at one point, the hospital supervisor came in and asked me sort of, you know, how's your, how's your stay going kind of thing. They must ask all patients. And I said, I'd like to ask you a question. I said, you know, out in the real world where I live, um, people tend to be kind of cranky overall. <laughs> Maybe it's my age, I don't know. And I said, what is it about this place that's, that people are just very kind? I mean, I can't always hear what's going on. I didn't have my hearing aid with me and I was a little out of it anyway. But you could hear the music of what was going on, the music of conversation. They were upbeat and conversational and communicative and just warm. And she said um, she thought it had to do with the shared commitment that people have when they choose a profession, a caring kind of profession, either a nurse or a doctor or any kind of caregiver, and that there's a passion behind that. And that that's, that's was reflective in the hospital setting and in the staff. And I thought that was really cool. The other thing is, and this is going to sound really strange, but by the time I got to the hospital, because it was kind of a process to get there, you know, they're pretty busy these days, so I really should have been in the hospital a month before I got there. But, well, like I said, we're going to keep it positive. So by the time I got there, you know, I was asked, several people asked me in the process of checking in from the emergency room and all that, and they'd say, you know, are you nervous to be here? You know, are you anxious? And I thought, I feel like I'm walking into a five-star hotel. This is fantastic. I don't have to figure out what's wrong with me anymore. You people are going to figure it out and we'll see, you know, if it, you know, it's a 50-50 whether this is going to turn out okay or not. But, you know, quite frankly, I couldn't have been happier. Just give me a warm bed and I could hand over all my worries and cares uh, to somebody else. It was strange, but um yeah, I don't. Uh, strangely enough, to me, I felt like I, I had gone into a five-star hotel. Now, I didn't necessarily feel that way when some of the treatments occurred, but but I was able to use um, 
what breathing techniques that I've practiced and other things that I've done over my life. I didn't find any of it very, very difficult, even though I was constantly being asked if I was anxious. Um, I wasn't. I was definitely in discomfort, but I wouldn't say I was anxious. Uh, the other thing that was told to me on dismissal, or as they're we're dismissing me, was uh, you know the good news. The good news is you know nothing, nothing that uh, that I need to come back for in terms of care. I mean, I do have to take care of myself, obviously, but. Uh, one of the, uh, I had at least two people. One was a nutritionist and one was the uh, attending doctor who told me that they thought the prognosis for uh, somebody in my situation uh, was, was, of course, good, but uh, would really be dependent on whether or not I had a support system uh, and a support system beyond, you know, my, my own self. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, I'm kind of used to taking care of my myself. I mean, my, my husband here, of course, but I don't have a really full social life, which is why you see me on YouTube. And, but I thought, oh, that's interesting. They're telling me something from their uh, educated perspective, and I need to remember that. So when I came home, I made sure to check in with friends. You know, I didn't have a lot of energy. It's not like I called everybody, but sent the word out that I would like to see people. Uh, on a somewhat regular basis and to be more sociable because that seems to be part of what will help me in my healing. So now I've been home for about two weeks and um, you, you know, things are uh, healing. What I know about healing is it's very up and down. You can have a really good day followed by a really problematic day. So it's definitely been up and down. It's certainly better than before I went to the hospital, but it's gonna take time. Now, in terms of time, uh, it means that I'm, I don't know when I'm going to get back to painting. I would like to get back to painting, at least in my, my mind's eye. And even when I was being treated for uh, cancer, for I had a year-long treatment for a pretty serious cancer uh, about 15 years ago, I never let my paints get wet, and I continued to paint even when I couldn't see very well. But I'm a lot older now, you know, 15 years older, and I don't know when I'm gonna get back to it. I have a commitment to get back to it because it's something that I love to do. And that was something that I realized in the process of, of these months that led up to being hospitalized and in the hospitalization itself, is it really settled in to kind of the core belief system. And I thought, what do you really value? And I thought, wow, there's some activities and things that I really value and some other things that I really don't and that I would like to uh, not engage in anymore. So I definitely had time to reflect on that and to think about plans for the future. And so that's what I'm doing right now. And so what I thought I would do is make this video before I completely forget how to make videos and edit them and give you an update on what's happening with me. Like I said, I don't know when I'm gonna paint again, but, um, but I have a commitment to do so. So I hope you are doing well and that you continue to, <laughs> what's my tagline? It's been such a long time. My tagline, uh, keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color. Yeah, how could I forget that? Eh, it's amazing, you know, if you don't use a muscle, you will lose it. So uh, I will be using all of my muscles and doing the best I can to be healthy. And if you stay in touch with me, that would be really helpful and help with my healing. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.